In top lane, there are three general positioning options. Riverside, Brushside, and in or behind the wave. A key skill in top lane is knowing when to collapse to a river or jungle skirmish at key moments, like scuttlecrab fights and epic monster contests. To collapse first, it's imperative that you hover to the riverside and control the river choke. The choke is a double-edged sword. Let's say you're Jace. If the opponent's wave is pushing and you move to hold the choke, Irelia can push the wave and cut you off from getting back to lane the short way. Once you move out into the river, like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube, you can't get back in. Here, Jace completely gives up the wave to move first to the river skirmish. Even though Irelia is stronger in lane due to the wave advantage, Jace's control of the choke and the brush prevent Irelia from influencing the river skirmish and allow red team to just eke out ahead. This one very simple positioning detail drastically influenced the outcome of the game. If Jace had played on the brush side here, then Irelia could move to cut off Jace from the choke, help blue team win the skirmish, and the game would be completely different. The second place to get an advantage through lane positioning in top lane is by zoning the opponent off the wave. If you have a lane advantage, you shouldn't let them get close to the wave, and you definitely shouldn't be letting them get the cannon minion. In these situations, you're wanting to push as slowly as possible to allow your minions to die and deny them from the opponent. Anytime your opponent steps up to get experience, you should be in a position to immediately punish them, which wouldn't be possible if you're standing here. The main thing to watch out for when attempting to zone the opponent off the wave is an enemy gank timing. Naturally, taking a forward position to zone the opponent comes at a cost of exposing yourself to a gank. Top lane is a delicate balance of using your windows of strength to play aggressively in zone, and then playing patiently when you're within a potential jungle gank timing, or there's a missing mid laner or support potentially roaming to your lane. If you're strong enough to fight both the opponent and the minion wave at the same time, you can hold the wave's position and freeze it on your side by juggling the minions in and out of the brush. Firstly, this wave position allows Orn to take an aggressive posture and zone Fiora away from the wave without putting himself in danger of ganks. And secondly, it opens Fiora up to ganks herself if she decides to trade back. Even if it's warded, against a ganking jungler like Hecarim with Orn at level 6, it's extremely risky for Fiora to go for any return trades. So standing on and controlling brush side is generally the strongest for laning if you're not actively last hitting. The brush side gives you the ability to drop minion aggro, as you can see Gangplank doing here. However, it has a downside, because if a gank comes, you can be cut off and have nowhere to run, except into the alcove to outplay or to stall for an ally counter gank. This is why you'll commonly see strong players swap to the river side when they're open to an enemy gank timing, especially on red side so that they can flash the large rock. When there's no threat of jungle gank on your lane, you generally want to be controlling the brush. It makes it very difficult for the opponent to walk up to the wave because you cover a large range of threat and targeted spells or auto attacks become ineffective. At elite level play, players will sometimes play mind games by staying in the brush and letting minions die when the opponent expects them to recall. In this example, Fnatic has come off a pretty disastrous fight with two dead for zero. G2 expects Fnatic to have recalled and so they try to push out two extra waves with a false sense of security but get punished by these mind games. This example just happened to be in the bot lane brushes, but the principle is the same for the top lane brushes. Optimizing the brush adds a lot of mind game potential, so if you're planning to get to the elite level, it's really important to start utilizing this aspect of brush play. So lane positioning in top lane is pretty complicated, and a lot of small positioning decisions can have a tremendous impact on the game outcome. For example, failing to control the choke when a scuttle fight is breaking out can lose you the early game. Positioning too far forward to press an advantage on an enemy gank timing can backfire. And one auto attack to balance the wave can be the difference between having control of the wave or conceding it. On the other hand, using these techniques at the appropriate times can create an enormous diff in top lane, even at the elite level. So thanks for watching, and if this video helps you out, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.